Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Welcome this morning. Another Shabbat, another occasion to rejoice. Another Shabbat in the month of Elul as we are continuing together to prepare our hearts to approach the days of awe. Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur are on the horizon. And this is that time and that season to really be putting a special emphasis and a special focus on purifying our hearts before the Lord as we approach those days in this new season. You'll notice in our Shabbat service this morning a particular emphasis on God's holiness, a particular emphasis on uh, the, type, the songs and the lyrics and the verses that really aid us in that journey of preparation. So let's pray and let's proceed. Lord, we bless you this morning. You are King of Kings and you are Lord of Lords. Lord, we delight in you this morning and we delight in your Shabbat. Lord, we delight in the opportunity to come before you. We delight in the fact that you open up the gates of repentance when we are seeking you out of sincerity and out of authenticity and in truth. Lord, this morning, I pray that today, in this brief time that we spend together, would be, although short in quantity, large in quality in terms of our uh, preparation in terms of our sense of rest in you, in terms of our sense of what you're, you're desiring for us and calling us to during this time in this season in the innermost parts. Thank you that even though we're in our homes, that we can in some way have companionship with one another and fellowship with one another along this journey. We bless you. In the name of Yeshua, we pray. Amen. Michael? Yeah. 
Avinu, as we sing the word Hoshiana, we get just a little preview of what is to come in a few weeks at Chag HaSukot. Lord, we get a little reminder of Yeshua entering the city of Jerusalem and that prophetic welcome of him. Lord, save. We've gathered together this morning because of your saving might, because of your strong arm, and because of your mighty hand. Lord, this morning, I pray that you would 
not just remind us, but confirm and affirm to us in our hearts that you do the unthinkably difficult and the unthinkably great things in this world and in our lives, that you accomplish miracles and wonders, not the least of which is opening up the gates of repentance for those who seek your face. We bless your holy name this morning, and it is our delight and honor to receive your sovereignty. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Blessed are you. Blessed and praised and glorified, exalted and honored is the King of Kings, the Holy One. Lord, you are first and last, and there is none beside you. Lord, we rejoice before your countenance. Lord, your name is exalted far beyond all blessings and songs. Your glorious name and kingdom will be blessed forever and ever. Let's bless your name, Lord, both now and for all time. Lord, you are the one who renews creation every morning. In your compassion, you have shown us mercy. You are our strength, our secure stronghold, the shield of our salvation. Let's join together with the words of the Shema. And of course, we remember from Mark 12 when the scribes came and they said, you know, which is the greatest of the commandments? And we as a congregation, as a, as a community, stand with, with all of our Jewish people and say, Hero is our Lord our God, the Lord is one. Shema Yisrael You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your strength. And these words that I give you today shall be on your hearts. Teach them to your children. Speak of them when you sit at home, you walk along the way, when you lie down and when you rise up. Find them as a sign in your hands and they should be as frontless between your eyes. And write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And the second is like unto it. Ve'ahavta l'recha k'mocha. And you shall love the one next to you, your neighbor, as yourself.
before we pray from Psalm 130, which is a song that fits the season that we're in now, the season of Elo coming up before Rosh Hashanah, I'd like to pray slowly from, from words of the Siddur, following the words of the Shema. And in this prayer, there are 15 words of description corresponding to the 15 Psalms of Ascent. And they describe the Lord, our Heavenly Father, and His instructions to us, and His love letter to those who are called by His name. The Lord your God is true, the Yatsiv, and firm, the Nachon, established, the Kayam, enduring, the Yashar, right, the Ne'eman, and faithful, the Ahuv, beloved, the Chaviv, cherished, the Nechmad, delightful, the Na'im, pleasant, the Nora, awesome. The Adir, mighty. Umtukan, perfect. Umkubal, accepted. The Tov, good. The Yafe, and beautiful. Lord, you are a shield of our salvation. Your name exists. Let us be image bearers of you, Lord. Your throne is established. Your kingship is forever. These words live and persist forever and all time words of Psalm 130, if you'd like to follow along with me, words fitting for where we are during this season as we prepare for Rosh Hashanah, the high holidays. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord, hear my voice, let your ears be attentive to the sound of my supplications. If you, O Lord, kept a record of wrong, who could stand? For with you there is forgiveness, so you may be revered. Wait, Lord. My soul waits in his word, I hope. My soul waits for my Lord more than the watchman for the morning. Watchman for the morning. O oh, Israel, wait for the Lord. For with Adonai there is loving kindness, and with him is full of redemption, and he will redeem Israel. Please join me in preparing for the Amidah, um, continuing with the theme of holiness. The Amidah is uh, similar to the prayer that Yeshua taught us, where he said, may your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. It sets uh, priorities and um, an intention that what happens here on earth matches what is in heaven. So if we look at the third paragraph of the Amidah, um, this is the paragraph that would be the Kedusha when we're together in a minion and saying it aloud that has um, different pictures from the prophets of angels praising God in heaven. And the part we say uh, silently is, you are holy and your name is holy and holy ones praise you daily. So in this paragraph, we're setting the intention that just as the angels are already praising God's holiness in heaven, so we here on earth want to join in with that with that praise, and our praise here on earth would be like what's happening up in heaven. So if you're able, please rise and turn yourself, or at least your heart, towards Jerusalem, and join me <clears throat> in reciting the Amidah.
I enter the Holy of Holies. I enter through the blood of the Lamb. I enter to worship you only. I enter to honor, I am. We enter the Holy of Holies. We enter through the blood of the Lamb. We enter to worship you only. I enter to honor I am. Lord, I worship you. I worship you, Lord, I worship you, I worship you. For your name is holy, holy, Lord. For your name is holy, holy. For your name is holy, holy, Lord. Thank you, Lord, this morning. Thank you for the opportunity, the invitation, experience, just a taste of your holiness as we're together. And even though we're not together in person, thank you for still giving us a way to set this day apart from the other days in our uh, corporate virtual worship, study, and fellowship. Lord, we look to you this morning. Lord, we want to pray for our friends and our family members who are in need of healing today. Thank you for every single name that is entered into the chat every week, Lord. And I want to invite you to go ahead and begin to enter names of people for whom you're praying in the chat. Uh, no last names. Let's respect privacy. But uh, please enter Hebrew names, first names. Uh, if, yeah. Lord, we thank you that you care for each one. Thank you that each one is prayed for beyond our Shabbat service, but for every person who... Uh, is a part of uh, Beit Tefillah and the ministry of prayer that you have called us to as a congregation and praying throughout the week, Lord, for each of the names that come before you. Lord, we are burdened for them. Lord, we're desiring to see an end to the suffering, Lord, and the pain and end to the sickness, Father, and asking that you would intervene, O oh God, in whatever way that you see fit. We pray for each one. We pray healing. We pray wholeness 
and we pray restoration. Lord, we're praying for our nation uh, during this time and just continue to pray that you would bring peace, that you would bring healing. Lord, whether it be uh, COVID-19, whether it be uh, the problems, Lord, and the trauma surrounding uh, racism in our country, whether it be the strife regarding uh, upcoming elections and politicizing, Lord. We're praying, Father, that uh, none of this, Lord, would be a hindrance to you working in hearts of individuals, Lord, working within communities, Lord, within cities and states and in our nation. Lord, Eloheinu ve'elohei avoteinu, kabel na berachamim et tefilatenu ba'ad artsenu umem shavta, harek et birchatcha al ha'arat hazot, al rosha shovteha shotreha, uf gideha, ha'oskim betzorche tzibor ve'emuna. God and God of our ancestors, we ask your blessings for our country, for its government, for our leaders and advisors, for all who exercise just and rightful authority. Teach them insights of your Torah and your Besorah, that they may administer all affairs of state fairly, that peace, that security, that happiness, that prosperity, justice, and freedom may forever abide in our midst. Lord, this is our prayer uh, here. And we pray, Father, that we would be a part of all of those good and right and righteous uh, things that you desire. Thank you. Avinu Shabbat our Father who is in heaven. In the name of Yeshua, we pray. Amen. Birthdays, anniversaries, Fritz Frieden is here to wish a number of people happy birthday and happy anniversary. Fritz. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Good to see you all. Wish I could touch you and hug you. This week we have seven birthdays. Today we have two. Charlotte Gunther, Ansel Brown, and the seventh we have Glenn Boone and Carol Lerner. The eighth is Monique Ledford, and on the tenth, Jackson Boone, and on the eleventh, Taylor Brown. Anniversaries is Robert and Elsie Kurt on the ninth of this month. Happy birthday to all of you, and happy anniversary, Robert and Elsie. Wish I could touch you. Bye. Beautiful. Thank you, Fritz. Happy birthday, everybody. Happy anniversary. We do get to at least mention more birthdays and anniversaries than we used to mention in our in-person services. Um, and so that's always special, just getting, a, getting an idea uh, each week of who, who we're celebrating and who we're celebrating with. Thank you, Fritz. Awesome. I'd like to move now to Barbara as uh, she blesses the Lord before our Torah reading for this particular Shabbat. We are in Parashat uh, Ki Tavo today, and Barbara is going to be reading from Deuteronomy chapter 26, and she'll be reading verses 1 through 3 after the blessing. Barb? Thank you. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher kedishan b'mitzvotah v'tzivanu la'asok b'divrei Torah Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who hallows us with mitzvot and commands us to engage in the study of Torah. The Hayah Kitavo Holen Haaretz Asher Adonai Elohecha Notein Lecha Nachala Virishta. Vyashavta ba Vila Kakta Mere Shit Kol Pri Ha Adama Asher Tavi Me Arzaha Asher 
Adonai Asher Adonai Elohecha Noten Lecha Vesamta Vatene Vehalachta El Hamakom Asher Yivchar Adonai Elohecha Lashachin Shemo Shaham Uvata El Hakoin Asher Yihye Bayamim Hahem Vamarta Ela Higati Hayom La Adonai Elohecha Kivati El Haaret Asher Nishba Adonai La avotenu la tet la nu. Amen. Yashar koach, Barb. Wonderful, beautiful. Parsha partners, it's your time now. Come on and gather around as Dr. Seth leads us in a Parsha study. Shabbat Shalom, Parsha partners. We are coming close to the end of Deuteronomy, the last and fifth book of the Torah. But don't be afraid. We will start over again in Bereshit in Genesis. So here we are in the Parsha. Does anyone know what Parsha we are in? I can hear the, the sound of children all around the living rooms of Carrie and Raleigh and Fuquay saying, Ki Tavo, which you are correct. It is Ki Tavo, Deuteronomy. So um, there's an image in Kitavo that I want to I want to think about with you guys, um, and the image is this. Now Moses, remember, is giving a long sermon, and and during this part of the sermon, Moses says, "Listen, when you guys enter the land of Israel, you know they aren't there yet; they are just outside the land of Israel. But when you do, what I want you to do is put some of your tribes on the Mount Gerizim and some on Mount Ebal. And so just behind me here." You have the real Mount Ebal and Mount Gerizim. We're looking at them right now, where the children of Israel were to stand. And on one side, they would pronounce curses. and the other mountain, they would pr pronounce blessings. So you have a one mountain curses and the other one blessings. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I hear the word curse, what do you think about? To me, I think about being afraid or scared or like fear, right? So like, tell me about an animal that you're really afraid of. Anybody who wants to like write it in the sidebar, an animal that, that you know, evokes or like brings about fear. Any, any thoughts there? For me, okay, let me see, a lion. Yes, that, that's a good one. Lions are certainly f animals that evoke fear. Anyone else? Spiders. I saw a bear a couple weeks ago and I was kind of scared. So the question is, why are you scared of that animal? And it, poison dart frog, that's a, that's a good one. So the question is, why are you scared? Well, it's very likely you're scared because it's gonna bring about harm to you, a consequence. So just like the children of Israel, when they were on these two mountains, it, they were scared. They were scared like if you, if you don't follow God's word, if you don't do his instructions, something bad will happen to you. And that causes fear, just like a poison dart frog, just like a snake, just like, okay, Tavi says she's not scared of anything, but okay, that could be the case too. Anyway, we're going to get to that in a moment. So here we are. That is fear. Now there's another thing called awe or wonder. And did you know that the Hebrew word yira, yira, can mean both fear, as in like I'm scared of a poison dart frog or a lion or a bear. It can also mean yira, I am yira, I am in awe or in wonder. Now there's another scene that, another little thing here. When I think of awe, it can mean something very different. It's kind of hard to explain. But um, when I think of awe and wonder, I think of a mountaintop. And I think in this scene that we see behind us, Blessings and curses, it brought forth fear, as in fear of something bad happening. And also, when you're on a mountaintop, I think it also brings about 
awe or wonder, that sense that when you look into the stars, you kind of don't know what to say because you know that you are created by a loving father and you just sometimes don't have words and you get this wonderful warm feeling inside of you. And that is the way I describe awe. And I get that when I'm on a mountaintop and I'm wondering if the children of Israel felt both fear as in fear of like getting hurt or consequence and also fear as in like awe and wonder about who God is. And so those are the words that I'll leave you with today from this week's parasha. And from you, for you parasha parents, I'll leave you with this in terms of describing awe and fear. Awe is what happens to fear when it stops being about me. I'll read that again for you Parsha parent, parents. Awe is what happens to fear when it stops being about me. And I'll leave it there. Thank you, Seth. Yasha Koach. Well, in the month of Elul, it's traditional to be reading Psalm 27 each and every day, and not just in the month of Elul, but uh, leading up until Yom Kippur. And I encourage that. I think it's a wonderful uh, psalm for us to be reading as we're approaching the High Holidays. And in Psalm 27, uh, traditionally, the enemies that are mentioned and referenced there are often uh, thought of in an applicational sense or figuratively as the sins for which we're repenting during this time as we approach these holy days. If you're on our email list, you know that I'm seeking to offer just a short uh, devar, a short word and uh, meditation on uh, the different verses of Psalm 27 during the month of Elul, and uh, three of those videos have been released. If you're not on our email list, you can sign up for our email list on our website. We'll show you how afterwards. And uh, if you're not on our email list, you can find those videos and all sorts of different uh, videos and recordings of our Shabbat morning services and other events on our YouTube page, which is Sha'are Shalom NC. So lots of resources that are uh, continuing to uh, be built up there on our YouTube page. Today, I'd like to look at the next few verses in Psalm 127. And I'd like to first just uh, sort of review or remember where we've been in the psalm so that we can then take a look at three other verses in the psalm briefly this morning. Psalm 27 of David. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Fear. The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and foes, it is they who stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war arise against me, yet I will be confident. In the verses we're emphasizing today as we continue in Psalm 27, one thing have I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy, I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Just a few reflections as I often like to do on this psalm. And the first reflection on these verses is that we see in the psalmist and we uh, receive uh, from these words uh, in the, from the psalmist this morning, this sense of no fear, the sense that in God's 
presence, fear is sent into exile. Those first three verses that we read begin by asking, because God is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? And then it goes on to discuss enemies and armies encamped against me. In the previous videos, I was uh, giving an uh, illustration of enemies by speaking about the Roman army encamped around the city of Jerusalem in the first century CE. And that gives us a real sort of picture, uh, perhaps, of, uh, of this on a very literal level in, in, in a very tangible sense. But here, notice that the psalmist seeking the presence of God, in doing so, fear seems to be banished. It, it's not that enemies don't exist and are a figment of one's imagination or the psalmist's imag imagination. It isn't that danger uh, isn't real. But it is that that place of seeking God does something incredible in, in the heart of the psalmist here so that those enemies and those present dangers are not a focus and, and are not something that are hindering the psalmist from drawing closer to God. And in fact, that emphasis becomes God and God's presence. And that's what becomes paramount in the face of whatever and whenever. And let's remember that here and now for our lives, especially if we're struggling uh, with fear given current events, given uh, situations uh, that are specific to our own lives, that in God's presence, there is a change there in our hearts. And that's important, and that's what, what seeking God and God's presence, uh, God accomplishes in our lives through that. A second reflection on this passage is just that wonderful phrase, one thing I have asked of the Lord. Above all else, in the midst of and in the face of trial, danger, and opposition, what is the psalmist's singular request? It's not that, you know, uh, any number of material uh, requests. It's that I may dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We've all encountered at some time or another that question. If you could wish for one thing, what would it be? We know the story in uh, mythology about the, 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 the wish for gold and for, for riches there. Well, this is a good question for us this morning. What in our minds and what by our lives and our behaviors and our actions are we demonstrating is our singular request, one thing I ask of the Lord, and our singular pursuit, that will I seek after. The asking of God and the pursuing on our part so frequently are like a hand in a glove in the scriptures and, and go together. And when we look at our lives during this time and during this season, what seems to be our concern? What occupies us above all else during this time and season? The psalm here gives us a great encouragement example and uh, should, should be taken as an admonition that above all else, we should be seeking God's presence. A third reflection on this psalm is that as I look at the psalmist's request here, I see what I think is a request that might involve place, but that actually emphasizes a place beyond a place. Oftentimes when we read this psalm, we think to ourselves about uh, the temple in Jerusalem, a physical place and a physical structure, and that the psalmist here is requesting that the psalmist could be residing, dwelling, sitting, staying uh, in the temple continually. 
And that might be going on here, and there might be a sense of that, or that might be at play on some level, especially for those reading this while the temple stood in uh, Jerusalem and those who had or wanted to have experience of that place. But as I read these verses, I'm not seeing an emphasis on place itself. This is a Psalm of David. Now, that is a notoriously difficult phrase to understand and interpret. Does it mean that David wrote the song? Is it by David? Uh, does it mean that it's for David, that it was written for David? Does it mean that it's Davidic, that it's of David in the sense that it's in the spirit of worship of, of King David? Uh, these are all sorts of questions that surround this sort of enig enigmatic of David phrase. Um, so, but in terms of David's lifetime, of course, there was no temple yet. There was, there was no uh, temple built in uh, Jerusalem in David's lifetime. When it says to behold, we usually translate to behold the, the, the beauty of the Lord or something like that. Well, that word for gaze is actually not so much a word for to look at as it is a word to envision. So, for example, um, when a prophet like Isaiah uh, is, is given a vision by God, it's often uh, from, from this uh, particular uh, phrase, um, to, in, to envision or to, to see a vision of. The word that we often translate beauty, uh, to behold or to gaze at, and I'm saying to envision, uh, the beauty of the Lord might even be better translated as pleasantness. We say this word, noam, when we sing, for example, a time when we're putting the Torah back in the ark and we say all its ways are pleasantness or, or pleasant ways. It's not a word that that's so much con conjures up some, something concrete that one is looking at. Um, we're talking about uh, pleasantness. It says uh, the word that's often translated temple is hechal, which is actually not necessarily even temple. It means palace, to inquire in his palace. It's the same word that, for example, when Isaiah sees that famous and well-known vision of God high and lifted up and the, the train of God's robe fills the temple, it says, hechal, palace. And that's often seen as the heavenly temple would be a primary interpretation, I think, or, or a, um, a very... Uh, uh, popular uh, understanding of Isaiah there, that this is the heavenly temple. It talks about um, God's sukkah or tent or God setting the psalmist high upon a rock. And, and so you see the figurative language that's happening here. And all of this, I think, is to say that we shouldn't just get stuck in a physical place when we think about what's being communicated through this passage, that the psalmist is longing for that place of God's presence, not relegated to the temple only by any stretch or by any means. That place of fellowship with God, that place of, of having a sense of, of closeness and of unity and of oneness with God, that transcends place and time, and that is the psalmist's request, and that is the psalmist's pursuit. It reminds me of these two passages in the Brit Hadashah and of Yeshua's words as we come to a close. The first is Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, and I can't help but see this Psalm 27, verse 4, one thing I ask of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I might dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, as uh, the basis for Yeshua's words in Matthew chapter 6, 33, when he says, but seek first one thing, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Yeshua also says, just a few verses later, as you'll remember, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened 
to you. For everyone who asks, you know, receives, everyone who seeks, finds, we know as the passage continues. Here, what we're seeing in the words of Yeshua is this bringing together of the asking and the seeking of God for more of an experience of God in our lives, God's righteousness. God is in the seeking. And that's why Yeshua says here, the one who seeks finds. And that's our request. And that's our pursuit during this season, especially at all times. But of course, we're emphasizing it here in the month of Elul as we approach the high holidays. What are you asking of God in your life? What are you seeking in your life? These are important questions for each and every one of us. And we see here in Psalm 27 and in the words of Yeshua, what we're called to be uh, doing and what uh, God offers to us as we pursue uh, him in that request. Lord, thank you uh, this morning for your goodness. Thank you this morning for your availability and for your accessibility in and through Yeshua. Lord, thank you this morning that we're not having to enter these upcoming days um, with a, uh, a fear in the sense of uncertainty and in the sense of uh, having no idea if it's possible to, to, uh, uh, to gain a place of acceptance with you. Lord, thank you that that comes through our faith and through our trust as a gift, Father. I pray that for each one of us, we would continue the asking, Lord, and we would continue the seeking of your presence. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Let's all stand. Aleinu l'shabeach l'adon hakol L'atet gedula l'yotzer b'reishit Shelo asanu k'goye ha'aratzot Velo samanu k'mishpachot ha'adama Shelo sam chelkenu kahem V'govalenu k'chol ha'monam ואנחנו קוראים ומשתחווים ומודים לפני מלך מלכי המלכים הקדוש ברוך הוא שהוא נוטה שמיים ויוסד ארץ ומושב יקרו בשמיים ממעל ושכינה תוזור ושכינה תוזור וגוה מרומים הוא אלוהינו אין עוד אמת מלכנו אפס זולתו כתוב בתורתו, וידעת היום, וידעת היום, והשבות אל לבביך, כי אדוני הוא האלוהים, בשמיים ממעל, ועל הארץ, ועל הארץ, מתחת אין עוד. ונאמר, והיה אדוני למלך על כל הארץ ביום ההוא, ביום ההוא יהיה אדוני אחד, ושמו, 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 
ושמו Amen. You can be seated. Um, if you um, are observing a yard site or are in mourning, we offer this prayer uh, instead of the Kaddish, since we're not together in a minion. But I would invite those who are in mourning to uh, join in this prayer. Master of the world, God of the spirit all flesh, it is revealed and known before you that it is my fervent desire to praise your name and to remember and honor my beloved by reciting the mourner's Kaddish in the company of a minion. Though circumstances prevent me from doing so, may my yearning and my prayers find favor in your eyes and be accepted and received before you as if I had prayed that Kaddish. May you grant hope and healing to all who suffer and may we soon be able to once again safely gather in holiness and joy. May your name Adonai be elevated and sanctified everywhere on earth and may peace reign everywhere. Ose shalom bim romav hu yaase shalom aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael ve'al kol yoshvei tebel ve'imru. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Barb. Just a couple of announcements before I uh, turn it over to Mike Kaufman to bring a few other community highlights and then to close us out with Shabbat Shalom. Um, this coming Saturday night, uh, we are going to be holding a Salichot service uh, virtually via Zoom. And you'll be receiving more information about that this week. It's actually after Shabbat ends. It will be at 8.30 p.m. on Saturday, September 12th. Uh, this is the beginning of special uh, penitential prayers uh, leading uh, up to uh, uh, the high holidays. And that begins uh, just after the, the Shabbat before Rosh Hashanah. Um, ben Wiseman will be leading us in that Zoom service. And that will uh, kick off our fall holy days, uh, services, services, observances, and events. So you can mark your calendars now, but look for more information about that uh, to come. Uh, secondly, on Sunday, September 13th, not tomorrow, again, not tomorrow, but a week from tomorrow, Sunday, September 13th, 3.30 p.m. We're doing something we've never done before. It is a drive through dvash. Dvash means honey. And everyone is invited to drive through Share's uh, drive and parking area from 3.30 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. on Sunday the 13th. Honey is just one of the many gifts and blessings that we are hoping and praying and trusting that you will receive. Uh, there's something uh, for you other than honey to help you in, in walking through these uh, fall holy days uh, in, in primarily in our homes uh, and to supplement our services that we will be uh, holding, of course, uh, throughout the holy days. There will be something special for children, a gift for them, uh, activities for them. You'll have the opportunity to receive prayer. Um, there may be some music, there may be some uh, signs and special greetings uh, and that sort of thing. So we're asking that everybody uh, wear a mask, that everybody uh, remain in your car, um, and we hope that we'll all be uh, really encouraged and, uh, and really just surprised by how much love and connection we can feel even through a, a brief drive-through um, as, a, as a community. We have a number of other community highlights, and for that, we're going to go to Mike Kaufman. Well, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Uh, some brief uh, community highlights. Um, there will be no uh, Matthew Bible study this week uh, because we have Labor Day, and I have the grandkids coming over, so that's what we're going to do on Labor Day. Um, on Tuesday at 7 p.m. will be the Hebrew Blastoff class, so you should have registered for that class, hopefully. And at 7.30 p.m. on Wednesday, the Sisterhood Coffee and Conversation. 
So Tuesday night, Hebrew Blast Off, and Wednesday night, Sisterhood Coffee and Conversation. I'm going to share my screen, if I may. And again, as a reminder, you can come to our website for information, for visiting, for uh, events, listening, and giving, and also for prayer. And I want to share one other screen with you that uh, Rabbi Seth mentioned. And this is our YouTube site. So again, Shatre Shalom at NC, and you can see uh, videos listed here up on top, and you can subscribe. Look, Mike subscribed, you should do that too. And then you can call up the videos, including uh, the uh, morning prayers and other uh, during the week prayers that, uh, that Seth posts for us there. Well, with that, I say Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat 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 Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat 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 Shalom. Shabbat Shabbat. Shabbat Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shabbat. Shabbat Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat 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 Shalom. Happy good day and a happy anniversary also to the Wilms on the 8th. I want to mention that as well. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. We can go ahead and unmute, spend a few moments.